All right, Sandy 200s, this is one of wish list for many photographers and videographers. So do I. I've been using the Canon 7200 f2.8 for countless projects, and I use it with my story mirror systems together with an MC11 adapter. Everything seems fine, except you couldn't able to use the advanced features since this is not a native lens. You might be wondering why I never get like a Sony 7200 f2.8 GMs, and there's a few reasons behind it. First off, is definitely the price. It costs around 2600 USD, which is not cheap. Secondly, I own a few Canon lenses before the Sony mirror system, so I can easily just adapt the Canon lenses with adapter like MC11s. Thirdly, I still prefer the Canon direct manual focus compared to linear or fly-by-wire system from Sony. Um, but you know what? Technology is getting better. Lenses is getting smaller, faster, more reliable. And um, you're right, today we're going to talk about the Sony 7200 f2.8 GM, but not this one. Instead, we're going to talk about the Mark II versions, which is the one that we are recording right now. First off, special shout out to Sony Malaysia for sending us this lens so that we can try it out and also share everything with you. Obviously, today we're going to put this up against the Mark I versions. And in this video, there will be an in-depth review and also a full comparison between these two lenses. So let's dive in right away. We're going to talk about the ergonomic and designs. Physical-wise, they look identical. However, there will be some differences between two of them. But we're going to talk about that later. Um, since both of them coming from a GM series lenses, so they are pretty solid, well-built and well-designed. The first thing that I do notice when I hold both of these lenses is the weight. The Mark II version is definitely weight lesser compared to the Mark I. On paper, it's 30% lighter than the Mark I versions. The Mark I version weighs around 1.55 kg with a tripod collar. And as for Mark II, it weighs only 1.1 kg with a tripod collar. So if you have used a Canon 7200 f4 before, the Mark II versions give you a similar feel. Size-wise, both of them are the same, 88mm x 200mm. On the front, they come with a 77mm filter thread, which is pretty common for large lenses like this. The Mark II versions upgraded its hood's design to a circular front edge, compared to Mark I's, which has a paddle-shaped lens hood design. Both of them still have the filter access window for making adjustments to rotate filter, such as a polarizers and a variable and this. The Mark II version has shrunk down their focus rings, which personally, I don't think is a problem because a lot of times after using the 7200's Mark II, I've kind of relied on the AF a lot and I don't really use the focus ring that often anymore. Both zoom and uh, focus ring are pretty smooth, grippy, well damped, yet remain a good tension where it just feels right. The new 7200 comes with an aperture ring, which is going to be a huge feature for video shooters because it's always nice to have a physical ring to change your aperture rather than a small button behind your camera body. Other things that I really like about the 7200 compared to other GM series lens is both of them have um, manual focus override features or DMF, direct manual focus, which means you can focus manually without switching the manual using the AF-MF switch, which is fantastic because you can correct the focus when the auto focus targets went wrong. And the best part is the Mark II version has a dedicated button for these functions, which you can disable and enable these functions with just a single click. Next, there's three custom buttons around the lens, but they do the same thing. At first, I have no idea why, but after using it for a while, I think it kind of makes sense because as a photographer, we are always switching from landscape to portrait, and this helps us to click the button without rotating our hands. So it makes a lot of sense for photographers. But I still hope Sony allows us to customize each of them because as a hybrid shooter, we shoot videos and it will be very helpful if we are able to customize each of them individually. As for the rest of the buttons and switches, both of them have the same AF MF switch, focus limiter switch, which you can focus something faster at far away or closer, and of course the optical stabilization switch. 
The only difference is the additional optical image stabilization modes, which now the Mark II version comes with third mode. The first mode is the normal use. The second mode is optimized for panning shots. The new third mode emphasizes framing stability when shooting moving subjects. In short, it's better for following shot, but we're going to test it out later. Another thing I really love about this 7200 is the tripod colors because it comes with an adjustable knob, which is great, and also an easy removable mechanism for Mark I and Mark II. Another thing I noticed is there's a quarter inch thread at the bottom after you remove the collar. So you can pretty much mount anything onto it. Lastly, these two are dust and moisture resistant, and I do believe it's a must for a GM series lens. They have some nice rubber gasket around the mount and I always feel so secure using them in any situations because it feels so well built for any situation. As usual, we're going to start with a side-by-side -side comparison and we have two camera A7 III and both of them mount side-by-side with the Mark I and Mark II. So we're going to start with walking tests. I must say, both of these lenses perform well, focus fast and smoothly. They are lightning quick and snappy from front to back, which is great for projects like an event or wedding. Sony does an excellent job with its linear motor systems. The Mark I version goes pretty flawlessly and accurately, as you can see here. However, I do notice Mark II seems to be faster than Mark I thanks to the latest AF drive mechanism XD linear motors. However, in general, I notice that the Mark II might struggle a little bit more to refocus when the subject runs out of frame and comebacks in the frame. On the flip side, Mark II performs very consistently and accurate when the subject is always in the frame. We also did some touch focus tests side by side and clearly, the Mark II version performs better and faster than the Mark I. Another thing I do notice is the Mark II seems to be better in terms of focus breathing compared to Mark I, which we're going to talk about this later in the next test. Speaking about focus, the next thing I want to test out is manual focus and focus breathings. So both the Sony 7200 f2.8 are using linear motor systems, which are great because they are accurate, smooth, for pull focus. But in my personal experience, I still prefer direct manual focus system. Before we proceed to focus breathing, I realized that both Mark I and Mark II have a very, very short throw. So, in my personal opinion, I think this might not be an ideal focus ring if you need that slow focus pull. In terms of focus readings, I do not have a good experience with the GM series lens because in the past, I think they performed pretty badly even compared to the standard Sony FE lens. In the Mark I versions, there's quite a bit of focus breathing at 70mm, but not so much in 200mm. After five years, I'm happy to report that Sony has improved their focus breathing for these Mark II versions. Clearly, there's a significant improvement when compared to Mark I's, so thumbs up for that. In addition, the focus breathing causes the Mark I to have a closer focal view when it compares to Mark II in 70mm. Alright, some extra notes for video shooters. We tested out the focus shift and I think these two lenses are power focus lenses, which means as you change your focus length, the focus wouldn't off and you wouldn't need to refocus. However, I did find out some reviews mentioned that the Mark I version is a non power focus lens, but the one that I have seems perfect. So, feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you have a Mark I version. I personally think that this is the most exciting part because right now they have a drastic improvement for the Mark II versions. Right now they are offering 0.4 meters at 70 mm and also 0.82 meters at 200 mm. When it compares to Mark I, they only offer 0.96 meters at 70 mm and also 200 mm. 
I really love the features because now you can capture some close-up shots that I don't think you can find a similar focal distance from any other similar focal lengths except macro lens. This 0.4 meter minimum focus distance enables us to create some pretty unique results and it's very versatile. Let's talk about optical image stabilizations. So this is one of the most important features for a long lens like this. And both 70 7200s comes with several modes and this Mark II comes with three. The first mode is standard IS modes, which give you um, overall general stabilizations for any movement. Mode 2 is used for panning movements. The new Sony 7200 comes with a third mode that emphasizes framing stability when shooting moving subjects. Let's have a look at image quality. Now we are at 70mm wide open at f2.8. And I must say, this is a pretty competitive comparison since both of them look more or less the same. The edges might look a bit soft in Mark 1, but things get better once you stop down to f4 onwards. In 200mm, center sharpness is good, the corner sharpness is acceptable and things get better once you stop down until f5.6. I would say the more noticeable difference between these two lenses is the vignetting and distortions. In f2.8, the Mark II versions has a better control at vignetting, even the distortion is lesser than Mark I's. Both of vignettes were better after f4. In 200mm, both of these lenses perform pretty equally in terms of distortions, but honestly, 200mm should give you a distortion-free result. As for vignetting, Mark 1 is much more noticeable when compared to Mark 2. Following the chromatic aberrations, there aren't any visible chromatic aberrations for both Mark 1 and Mark 2 in f2.8, but bear in mind, the whole chromatic aberration test was shot in both f2.8 with different focal length. In the bokeh department, Sony GM series lens has been doing a great job in the past few years. They have been creating a lot of round, buttery, smooth bokeh, so I would expect it to happen to the 7200s. And apparently, this Mark II version has an upgraded 11 aperture blades unit, so in theory, it should be better than the Mark I. At 70mm f2.8, there's a noticeable cat eye around the corner of the image for both lenses, but I would say Mark II has a lesser cat eye around the corner. Mark II has a rounder, less onion ring, cleaner bokeh throughout the frames when it compares to Mark I. The Mark I gets better when stopping down to F4. Overall, I would say in 70mm, Mark II has a better performance than Mark I's, especially when it's wide open. When it comes to 200mm, I don't think there is, isn't any noticeable difference between these two lenses. I personally think that they look pretty identical in 200mm. Right now, let's look at the flaring test. The Mark I version has been using the Nano AR coating technology, which suppresses the reflections that causes flare and ghostings to improve the image clarity and contrast. The Mark I handles pretty well, but the Mark II handles even better because of the upgrades, the Nano AR Coating 2. And I do notice that the Mark II version has a lesser green tint when it compares to Mark I at the flaring area. Alright, there's no doubt that the Mark II version is better than the Mark I version after 5 years of long waitings. But is it worth upgrade? After using a while, I think Sony has been focusing a lot of features for video shooters. The aperture ring, the better AF, better linear response AF, 
close focus distance, lesser focus breathing and lighter. For a video shooter, I think you should definitely consider these upgrades because I do believe all these little features will improve or make your life easier. On the flip side, if you are photographers or someone who just wants to shop around and looking for something cheap, sharp, fast and reliable, the 7200 Mark 1s is your choice because optically, they are pretty close. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed these comparison videos. So if you guys do enjoy, feel free to give us a like, share these videos, subscribe our channel, and as always, create, learn, and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.